that I want to use with you today, which is, I will say, the Lord is risen, alleluia, and you will say, alleluia, the Lord is risen. Oh, I forgot my microphone, didn't I? The Lord is risen, alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Let's add that last part. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Wonderful. We're so happy to have everyone here today. We have a very full service today, and so I just wanted to give you a heads up that we are only going to sing the first two verses of each of the hymns today. Um, so, and we hope that you will enjoy um, the lilies. And I think we're going to dive right into the service. Let us, or let me try this one more time. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Let us worship our most glorious Lord.
Please join me in the call to worship. Today is the day mystery unfolds. We glimpse, we glimpse it at, it at the, dawning the dawning of light. light. We yearn to hear our Lord calling us, sister, sister brother, brother, sibling. Sister. Today we recall again God's trustworthy promise. The tomb is empty, the Lord is risen, the enemy of death is destroyed. We delight saying Alleluia. We wonder singing Alleluia. We are witnesses shouting Alleluia. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Amen. Death is overcome and evil is thwarted. Trusting, trusting in God's grace, let us confess the sin that we carry that we may receive new life in Christ. If you would pray the prayer of confession with me. On this bright and joyful day, we bring our whole selves to you, great God honestly naming the truth about our lives. We are sinking under piles of shame, judgment, and self-pity, feeling closer to hell than heaven. Christ, rend our veil of tears. Restore us, renew us, revive us. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. The Lord is alive. The risen Lord destroys death 
conquers sin and wipes away all shame. We are drenched, sorry, my glasses. We are drenched in radiating mystery. God is with us. Receive the wonderful news that you are made alive in Christ. In Jesus Christ, you are restored. And let us say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. There are a lot of you here today, faces that we don't always see. And since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us all forgive one another. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. And now would you turn and greet all of those who are here today with signs of peace. If you would stand and sing. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of our risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. It's titled, Gentiles Hear the Good News. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. 
It's titled The Resurrection of Jesus. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to, the, to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. young disciples to come forward as they will. So. I don't know if we're going to have room for everybody. Do this a little bit. Did everybody get an egg? Yeah. Did you all get an egg? Come right and sit right over here. And I'm going to bring the animals over right here. So. Yeah? Okay. Come right on. Can you come over this way just a little bit so I can show you the story? Can you come right on over here? Come. 
No, no closer. Okay. How about if I let you hold the bunny? Would you like to hold the bunny? Austin, would you like to hold the bunny? You want one of the others? Okay. What do you want? Oh, you want an egg instead. Okay. We like the egg better. <laughs> okay, would you guys like to hold bunnies? <coughs> want to hold the bunny? Do you want to hold the bunny? Yep. You had a doggy last time. You can stay right here. We're going to read a story. <laughs> Austin, would you like to see the pictures? You want to see the pictures? No? We'll just listen, I guess. <laughs> Will you be okay right there? Okay. Once, long ago, there was a little bunny with long whiskers and fuzzy ears and a fluffy little tail and he loved to hop through the garden where he lived. It was a wonderful garden filled with daffodils and crocuses and tulips, and maybe it had lilies like we have around here today too. A kindly old gardener tended the flowers every single day. The little bunny loved to listen to the songs of the birds, how he looked forward to what each new day would bring. He was always very happy when spring came, and he loved it when the sun came up early, for sunrise was his favorite time of the day. Can you see the bunny? See the bunny rabbit? Yeah. Uh huh. Do you want to sit here? Do you want some flowers? You want to choose a flower seed? <laughs> On this particular day, the sun rose bright and early as usual, but somehow the day was different and the little bunny was hopping around the garden, smelling the flowers and listening to the birds when a strange thing happened. <gasps> At midday, the sun suddenly became dark and at first he thought a storm was coming, but there were no clouds. It was as if the sun's light had suddenly burned out and he was so frightened by the sudden darkness that he quickly scampered to his burrow. Thunder rumbled and the earth shook as he nestled in safe and warm, waiting for the darkness to pass. Ooh. After a time, all was still and quiet like after rain, and the little bunny's ears perked up as he heard the gardener leading a man through the garden. Curiously, he followed them to a large opening in a huge rock. As he hid in a bush, he watched the stranger lay a man wrapped in white cloth on a shelf inside that rock. The bunny wondered what he could be doing. Who was this? Oh, I don't know. After the man left, three women gathered by the rock, and his ears bent toward their quiet whispers. One woman called the man who was lying so still and lifeless inside the rock by the name Jesus and said that he was the Son of God. The woman wept as they spoke of how Jesus, as he had hung upon the cross, and he had looked toward heaven and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. This news made the little bunny feel very sad. The next day, as the little bunny was hopping through a clearing in the garden, he discovered a small shape he had never seen before. It was sort of round, except for take a bluish one. It was sort of round and pale blue, and he hopped around it wondering what it could be, so lifeless and unmoving, when suddenly it cracked, and it startled the little bunny who darted for a bush and peeked out. It cracked again, and out of that shape came a chirp, the sound of a tiny bird crying out. Have you ever seen an egg crack before? Yep. You've seen a birdie come out? Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Well, down from a nearby tree, the mother bird swooped, taking the baby gently in her beak, and she carried it safely, safely to her nest. Curious, thought the little bunny. The small shape seemed so lifeless, but when the shell opened, it became alive, and he hopped over to the empty shell to look. Yes, curious indeed. 
Well, that little bunny hopped over to his favorite bush for a snack, and hanging on one juicy green leaf, he discovered something hard and shiny. What was this new thing? It didn't smell like something to eat. It wasn't moving. It seemed quite lifeless. And suddenly, that shiny shape began to break open. The hard chrysalis changed magically into bright orange and yellow, and first one wing burst forth, and none then another as the broken covering fell to the ground. What's that? Butterfly. Yeah, butterfly. A beautiful butterfly flew off into the sky. And he looked at the open chrysalis that had fallen away. Curious, he thought, how it seemed so lifeless and unmoving, yet inside was a butterfly, very much alive. Yes, he was curious indeed. Austin, did you see the butterfly? Is that a butterfly? Yeah, you can take Stu, it's okay. You want to see Stu? Yeah. Yeah, Stu, yeah. On the third day, the little bunny woke up feeling restless. What was so important? What did he need to do? In his mind, he saw the round blue shape. Remember that egg that changed into a baby bird? And he remembered the shiny hard thing that he thought was dead, but it wasn't. It had burst into a beautiful butterfly and had flown away. Do you guys know how to make a butterfly? Can you take your fingers like this? Make a butterfly. Can you make a butterfly? Mm -hmm. Make a butterfly. There you go. Make him fly. Yeah. I know we're going to lose Bunny, aren't we? Okay. Well, then he remembered the rock where someone had come to lay a body. Hurry, he thought, go and see. So the little bunny's feet flew down the path to the rock, and the boulder covering the opening had moved. Timidly, he peered in. No one was there. The cloth was empty. And suddenly, he was startled by a radiant white light. It was an angel. And the bunny listened as the angel gave him a wonderful message. Jesus, the one who once was still so still and lifeless, had risen from the dead. He was alive. Well, that little bunny felt the need to share his joyous news with everyone. Jesus had risen, but how could he alert others? Then he remembered this, empty eggshells and the shiny chrysalis. So he scampered to the clearing and he gathered up that broken eggshell which he had neatly laid into one of the gardener's baskets. And by his bush he found that empty chrysalis and he laid it next to the eggshell. And as he hurried about his work, he called out to the birds and the butterflies and the other bunnies in the garden and told them what had happened. And they brought flowers and beautiful stones and juicy berries to help him fill his basket. And out of the garden he went straight to the house of the man who had laid Jesus to rest inside the rock, and he set that basket on the doorstep. To this house and many others, the little bunny spread the joyous news. Jesus, who was once dead, is alive. He is with us now and forever. Do not be sad. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So that little bunny now understood the meaning of everything he had seen. Just as the egg and the chrysalis had appeared lifeless, so had that body wrapped in the white cloth. Just as new life had come from those shells, so new life emerged from that white cloth inside the rock. And every year after that, on Easter Day, the little bunny delivered his joyous message of rebirth to the world so that all of us would remember Jesus' special message of love, hope, and new life. So today, you each got an empty shell to remember that from the empty shell comes something that's life. And also, there's a package of seeds. Because if I open these seeds up, they're not going to look like they're alive. What do they look like when I pour them into my hands? Do they look alive? Do they look alive, Austin? Austin, do those look alive? They don't look alive, do they? No, nope. don't put them in your mouth, though, okay? <laughs> but what happens when you put them in the ground? 
they'll grow. So from something that looks like it's not alive, it is alive, right? Comes life. So I want you to remember, so take as many of the seeds as you want today with you and plant them. And remember as you plant them that Jesus is alive and he loves each of you. Can we say a repeat after me prayer? Can you take my hand? Oh, good. Thank you, Austin. Let's take hands. Oops, no, only for a second. <laughs> repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. And thank you for the life that you give to us. Amen. Thank you all for coming down today, okay? You can take and hold those during the service if you want and just bring them back at the end of the service. You want to take them with you and hold them? Yeah. No? Okay, you don't have to. Only if you want to. Okay. Okay. Did they get seeds downstairs? If not, they can choose them. So. Okay? Take what you would like. You didn't get seeds? Would you like one of these? Is that a good one? Mm. Did you like a seed? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Did you, you like that one? Okay. There you go. Okay. Thank you. I didn't prepare you as a congregation, but when we do a repeat after me prayer, you can help out the ones down front by repeating <laughs> after me too. <laughs> I am struck by the angel's question, why do you look for the living among the dead? Well, the, woman, the women arrived at the tomb that first Easter morning expecting to find Jesus' body just as they had left it on the Friday before. We are creatures of habit. We expect certain things. When someone is dead, they are dead. The women came with an expectation and a mission. They were going to prepare Jesus' body for death. They came with intent and purpose. They came with the perception that Jesus' death on the cross was the end of his life. They were mourning the loss. And what a horrific loss it was. There had been fear and anguish. They had been traumatized. This is what the Roman officials hoped to do with crucifixion. It was a public display that was meant to enforce the power of Rome and to keep the peace of Rome, but it did it through fear tactics. The angel's question was meant to knock them out of their reverie. Jesus isn't dead. Stop that train of thinking. Jesus is alive, despite what you experienced. Remember what Jesus told you while he was still alive. Jesus told you that he would rise again on the third day. Isn't this what fear and trauma does to us? It disorients us. The women were disoriented, and when they got to the tomb and things weren't as they had left them or expected them to be, that was even more disorienting. The Greek word aporio, translated perplexed, means to be at a loss or to be uncertain, to be in doubt. The women had just experienced a horrible and a cataclysmic event. And when things disorient us, we too are at a loss. We are uncertain. We doubt. These women's hopes have been dashed. Our hopes have been dashed. The last two years have been full of doubt. 
If the pandemic was not enough, there was government unrest. There were splits caused by mask or no mask, vaccine or no vaccine. There was death, lots of death, loss of jobs, economic uncertainty, loss of volunteers, and fear, lots of fear. Most recently, world events have taken a turn for the worse. The Russian invasion of the Ukraine and the subsequent atrocities, loss of life, and people forced to flee for their lives leave us wondering what's next. Like the women so long ago, we come looking for the dead. But then two men in dazzling clothes show up. We might use the word angels. These angels orient the women and they bring the women to the present. They don't allow them to continue to focus on past events. Rather, they ask a question that forces the women to process what they're really seeing and what is obvious. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus' body is not in the tomb. The angels force the women to process beyond their expectations and to focus on what Jesus told them, that everything he said has come true. At this point, the women become oriented. They remember. I think we can read between the lines and assume that they finally understood or put two and two together as to what was going on. Hope sprouts. I was reading an Upper Room article yesterday, and it told the story of a young man who died whose name was Casey. He was barely a sophomore, yet he drowned in a lake. As you can imagine, everyone was in shock. The author was friends with his family. Her four-year-old asked the question, Mom, why don't they just go find his rock? The mother asked, whose rock? And the little boy simply said, Casey's rock. When they found Jesus' rock, he was not there. Out of the mouth of babes. The mother goes on to say that her four-year-old's question helped her. It oriented her much like the angel's question to the women, to remember that in the midst of unimaginable loss, that Jesus overcame death. Just like Jesus, Casey had left death behind and was with his heavenly father. And she knew that because of Jesus' victory, they would see Casey again. It helps to remember that in any loss, Jesus has defeated death. Jesus overcame death and left the rock of his tomb behind. Like Little Bunny said in his story, new life emerged from within that white cloth inside the rock. And this new life is our hope, and it changes the way Christians perceive the world around us. It provides an anchor from which we do our ministry live our lives and how we respond to the cares and the concerns of the world around us. It orients us. We don't look for the living amongst the dead. We look for life emerging from what we first thought was dead. We look for the ways that the spirit is at work. We focus on Christ's mission and do not allow the world to disorient us. We look and work for transformation. Luke tells us that the first thing that the women did after this was to return to the apostles and to all the rest and proclaim the good news. This shows reorientation. The women have been transformed. The seed that Christ planted has sprouted and is beginning to grow into something new. This reorientation gives the women purpose. They are the first witnesses of the resurrection and they are the first to proclaim the good news to the rest of the apostles, despite the fact that the apostles don't believe them at first. We too have a purpose and a hope. Christ is alive. This isn't a past event. We don't proclaim Christ was risen. We proclaim, proclaim Christ is risen. Christ is present and active in our lives in the process of transformation 
that comes in our resurrected lives. And this hope is carried into the present and the future through our faith. Resurrection actually means to arise or to stand up. Our faith in a risen Christ can and does make a difference to the world. It changes our perspective. It orients us in times of disorientation. It orients us by giving us hope that what we see and experience isn't the last word. It reorients us to stand up and to rise up for needed change. It helps us to see the world with new eyes and it gives us courage despite events. It allows us to go on planting seeds of hope for future generations. It allows us to be ambassadors for God's kingdom. I hope that you will each take a packet of seeds with you today, and as you plant them, remember what Christ has given to us, hope, growth, renewal and transformation. Let us quickly pray. Jesus, we give you praise and thanks for what you did for us, for conquering death, for giving us hope, despite what the world seems to bring our way. Help us to hold on to that hope. Help us to be able to go out and proclaim what this faith means to us, to those around us, and to the world. We lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to respond to God's word through the singing of the song, In the Bulb There is a Flower. <laughs> Let us continue to respond to God's word by affirming what we believe is taken from the Confession of 1967. Let us read together. Life in Christ is life eternal. The resurrection of Jesus is a sign that God will consummate the work of creation and reconciliation beyond death and bring to fulfillment the new life begun in Christ. Before we go into the prayers of the people today, I've had one addition. Are there any other additions of prayers that you would like lifted up today? Jay, do you have a microphone?
Yes, I'd like to pray for my dad, Charlie Matias. He's right now in um, Geneva General Hospital. He has pneumonia um, and he has a fever. Um, hopefully it goes down. So I'm praying as we speak. For Charlie, for, right? For Charlie Matias. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. And you said what hospital is he in? Geneva. 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 Any others? Do you want me to add Tyler Huff to the list? My husband lost a former student of his of only a couple years ago this past week. It was an unfortunate accident, so I'm adding Tyler Huff to the list, too. Let us pray together as God's people. When you hear living God, please respond with, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers through Christ, who is risen from the dead, who lives and reigns forever and prays for us in heaven. Through Christ, we pray for the church. Let us be people of joy, living witnesses to the power of the resurrection and the good news of your grace and peace. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ, we pray for the earth. From the dust of the damaged earth, raise up our new creation, or your new creation, full of beauty, wonder, and glory. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ, we pray for all nations. Let the message of your saving power spread throughout the world, that the dominion of death is no more. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ, we pray for this community. Let the doors of this church be open wide as we go forth in love and service and others come in to find a home. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ, we pray for loved ones. Let us pray for all who suffer or in, are in need. From our own congregation, we lift the names of Aaron and Bethany, Dom and E.T., James and Glenn, Todd, Richard and William, Jamie and Zoe, David and Derek, the Reverend Tim Johnson, Florence Chapin, Jim, Peck, Douglas, Groover, Jones' neighbor, John, Charlie and Tyler Huff, Bonnie and Thurlow, Ed and Cheryl, Kay and Dale, Jean and Barb, and Paul, sorry, Barb, Eileen B, Betty C, Thelma, Jim and Ann Peck. And for all those having lost loved ones, we lift up the families of Lee Prong, Lynn Donaldson, Vern Coleman, Suzanne Bleak Stressing, Reverend John Watkins, the Johnson and South families, Dorothy Earhart, and Melody Neely, living God, hear our prayer. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. The Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God gave us Christ, the first fruit of creation, let us humbly offer the substance of our very lives in thanksgiving to our God. If you would stand as we receive the offerings.
This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Oh, you got to do better than that. <laughs> lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage, thwart the designs of evil, and show the way through the wilderness. You turn hardship into righteousness and reveal your hand upholding the just. With the faithful of every time and place, we forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty and to confuse the deceiver, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all things to give hope to those who long for peace. We give you thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering our Lord's self-giving love, we proclaim the mystery that is our faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Blessed are you, O Spirit, giver of life. You give us words when we have none. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher today and always. Come now, Prince of Peace, spirit of love, breath of life, and bring to all this hurting world the joy that Mary knew, and teach us to proclaim with her, I have seen the Lord. So in the unity, the Holy Trinity, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for all of you. blood of Christ shed for all of you. Would you join in the prayer after giving us communion with our risen and glorious Lord. 
now set it out to be a sign of the new life that is come into the world. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Let us join together as we sing our final hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, to give thanks. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Believe what you have witnessed and run to the others, joyfully shouting, I have seen the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you. 